All right, all right, all right. Well, we could hardly leave this little section on optimization with linear programming without a word problem, could we? No. So here we go. Each week, McKenzie can make 10 to 25 necklaces and 15 to 40 pairs of earrings, or pair of earrings. Pairs of earrings, okay. If she earns $3 on each pair of earrings and $5 on each necklace, and she plans to sell at least 30 pieces of jewelry, how can she maximize her profits? All right, so she's making necklaces and earrings. So let's first set some variables, and let's say that X equals the necklaces and Y equals the earrings. Now, we're told that she can make between 10 to 25, somewhere between 10 and 25 necklaces. And so we'll say that then 10 is less than or equal to X, and X is less than or equal to 25. That's between 10 and 25. And similarly, she can make between 15 and 40 pairs of earrings. So let's set up an inequality statement. The 15 is less than or equal to Y, earrings, less than or equal to 40. So you can make between 15 and 40. Uh, and so let's see, she plans to sell at least 30 pieces of jewelry. So we could then say that X plus Y equals 30. We'll re rearrange that in terms of Y and say that, uh, and actually rather than equals, I probably should put at least greater than or equal to 30. So we say x plus y is greater than or equal to 30. x plus x equals x is greater than or equal to negative x plus 30. And then our function equation for our profit Let's say $3 on each pair of earrings, $5 on each necklace. They reversed earrings and necklaces, so don't get confused there. So our function equation can then be f of xy equals 5x plus 3y. $5 for each necklace, $3 for each pair of earrings. And so there is all of our equations. Let me go in here and fix this. Let's say that this is greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to. All right, because she can make at least 30. All right, over here on this next slide, um, I have graphed, now I graphed all of these as equalities rather than inequalities so that the graph would not get so messy. And let's look at the graph over here on the right. Well, I guess before we do, look how I set up my window. I set my X minimum at zero and my X maximum at 40, I mean 50. And I did a scale of five. And then on my Y axis, which would be the earrings, I set it at negative five, and I just did that really so I could see the origin, because I'm gonna use the origin as a test point for all these inequalities, and I set the max at 50 and a scale of five. So here is my origin right here, zero, zero. And I'm gonna use it as a test point for each of these inequalities. Now this black vertical line, that is y is greater than or equal to 10. And so let's put in zero for x, see if that's a true statement. Is zero greater than or equal to 10? Well that answer is no. So then I would shade away from the origin. So I'd be shading in this direction. And what about uh, if I put in 0 for x less than or equal to 25? Is, is 0 less than or equal to 25? Well, yes. And this magenta line, vertical line, represents the x less than or equal to 25. So I'd be shading towards the origin. So I'd be shading in this direction. 
Now, what about y is greater than or equal to 15? So is zero, the origin, point of origin, is it greater than or equal to 15? Well, the answer to that is no. So I'm going to shade away from the origin. And is zero less than or equal to 40? Well, of course it is. So I'm going to shade towards the origin in this direction. And then finally, we got y is greater than or equal to negative x plus 30. If I put in 0, 0, 0 for y, 0 for x, then I come as 0 greater than or equal to 30. Well, the answer to that is no. So I'm going to shade away from the origin. All right. So I can see which little section here is my feasible region. And now I want to determine the vertices. And I got one, two, three, four. I got five vertices in this thing. So let's start right here at this one and then work our way around clockwise. So here I've got one vertice that X is 10, Y is 5, 10, 15, 5, 10, 15, 20. So X is 10, Y is 20. All right, and let's go up to this point here and x is still 10 and y is 40 5 10 15 20 25 30 35 40 yep so we got 10 40 all right let's check this vertices right here Okay, so X is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And Y is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. And we got two more to check. Right here's the vertices where uh, X is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And Y is 15. So we got 25. 15 and then lastly we got one vertex right here where y where x is 5 10 15 20 and y is 15 so we got 20 15. all right now we're going to need to test all of our five vertices to see which one gives us the maximum value so here's all of our vertices, and we are going to substitute those into our function equation. So let's first do this one right here. So we would then say 5 times 10 plus 3 times 15. And 5 times 10 is 50, and 3 times 10 is 45, and that equals 95. <coughs> uh, let's try this vertice right here. And we'd have 5 times 10 plus 3 times 40. 5 times 10 is 50. 3 times 40 is 120, and that's going to equal 170. We got two of them out of the way. Let's try this one here, the 25 and 40. So we got 5 times 25 plus 3 times 40. And 5 times 25 is 125, and 3 times 40 is 120. And so that's going to equal 245. And so what do we say? We test this one here. So we'd have 5 times 25 plus 3 times 15. 5 times 25 is 125. 3 times 15 is 45. And that's going to equal 170. 
And then lastly, we'll check the 1515, where we've got 5 times 15 plus 3 times 15. And 5 times 15 is 75. And 3 times 15 is 45. And that's going to equal 120. So which one gives us the maximum profit? Well, it's this one right here, 245 over that vertices gives us the maximum profit. So we would then have, be selling to get maximum profit. We have 25 necklaces and 15, no, excuse me, 40 pairs of earrings. I can only say one word for all of this. Shazam! <laughs>